You're welcome back. This is News File. It's your most authoritative news analysis platform. Just a couple of messages. One from uh, Dr. Atu, Edi from Evan jo uh, Atu Edu from Evan, Georgia. He says, to link Ufuswampofu's stubborn political communication and tenacity to his religious faith is unfortunate and sanctimonious. Let's us concentrate on the criminality in his speech. And... Um, what M Ma Martinet posturing uh Togbi um okay I can't say the rest of something Fiag Fiaga says that uh okay Togbi your message is really long you say clearly these words captured on the leak tape have a long term implication for the country's security and the commitment of political parties to the president's call for disbandment of criminals and yet jobless hoodlums with whose actions on behalf of political parties could escalate to a strange phenomenon of insecurity being witnessed by some of our West African neighbor, neighbor uh, countries. The, 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 fines of, the lines of this tape are too clear and straightforward for any intelligent person to dismiss it as a fake tape. So, uh, Prince Bansa in England. Okay, you choose to call yourself Togby, something I can't pronounce. All right, <clears throat> thank you very much. So, um, let's see if RTI may help us to get into the mining pits. Mm -hmm. So, Doc, what's your problem? Parliament has done a research and they say it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. But we're not saying because of that we will not pass it. We're going to pass the law, but we'll delay the implementation because each year it is costing us X amount of money to implement RTI. Why have you been against it? I was on your Facebook wall and I saw you mocking and... Oh, mocking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you, and then you, you, said, you suggested that this... You can't believe that Parliament has gone to do a research. <laughs> yeah, so what is it? <laughs> no, okay, so I, I, I think that, uh, so I, let's put some, uh, let, let's mm. set the record. Let's do this very let, quick. Let's, so, yeah, yeah, let's set mm. the record straight on that. Right. So first of all, uh, this is not Parliament's research. Okay. So according to the uh, Public Financial Management Act, mm. Session 100, uh, now all bills that are originating from the executive should have a fiscal impact statement. That is supposed to be prepared by Ministry of Finance. Mm. All right. Now, the Director of Research at Parliament decided that, well, since nobody was doing it, uh, he was going to try his hands uh, doing a few of the laws. I think he's done this for witness protection and something else. So it's not a, a Parliament, it's not being commissioned by Parliament. So I've seen what, what, what is done. And uh, the reason why I said the premise is flawed is because, um, first of all, it, it will not be practical to set up information commissions uh, in all 250-something districts. That's not the idea uh, of the RTI and how RTIs are rolled out. Uh, so that cost alone was over 100 million uh, per year. So when you start adding up other things, then you are getting to those ridiculous numbers. What we have said is that, first of all, this is a distraction. We shouldn't be having this conversation now. We are expecting Parliament next week to have a very short second consideration to deal with some matters we have raised regarding Clause 13. We have already gone and agreed with Parliament on the commencement date being moved for a year because we don't have a budget. And then we have also stated that in the first three to six months, there has to be some clear statements about what should be done in terms of setting up the, of the information commission, designating information officers. The law does not say recruit information officers. Right. So a lot of MDAs already have PR. communication, PR. Mm -hmm. You can designate them to take, you know, because you don't even know. They won't change them anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, so when you begin to add recruitment of uh, information officers across the country and all those kinds of things, then you are getting into those kinds of numbers. And lastly, the most effective way to implement RTI is proactive disclosure. What we are just saying is that, as of 2019, if I want some information, I should be able to get it easily. 
Like I go to Ministry of Finance website, almost everything that Ministry of Finance generates, I can find it there. BOG, I can find it there. All of the other MDA should have the same kinds of things. Mm. So that, as at the current, you should be able to get it. What is in the past where maybe it was done by paper and so on, we can begin to figure out a way to you know, digitize it and so on and so forth. But when you start to run before you crawl, you, know, you have to crawl before you run. Mm. And it looks like people think that with the LTI, a, on, on day one, we should have the same system as India and UK and Canada. I think nobody has that illusion, at least not from the coalition. OK. OK. Um, <laughs> but you, you seem to suspect that there's a motive behind bringing this to the public and telling them that, look, it's expensive to implement. Well, that's why I say that it was a distraction. Because as, a distraction. I said, <laughs> uh, as far as I know, okay. we are going to pass the law. Mm. Uh, we as I said, we have gone and agree all our differences with Ion right. Data. You say you say it's a distraction. Yeah, let's see, the let's see if Suleimana, <laughs> Suleimana will be that diplomatic. Because <laughs> look, you guys, we've all been on this for years now and we don't seem to ever give up. So what do you think is happening today? Well, uh, first of all, um, when those figures were bandied around, um, I should say that I didn't think that it was just somebody who has decided to put up um, to do this kind of research and put out these figures. I, I think that there was something to it. Mm. Um, but having said that, you see, I think the notion that was created was that, oh, 750 million for five years. Wow, that's, that's quite big. But when I saw it, my initial reaction was, oh, is that, that just that? <laughs> um, 750 for five years? And I said so because, look, President, it was President Kufo who said that it appears we do we think to know the cost of everything mm -hmm. and the value of nothing. nothing. Mm -hmm. If you take the, the office of the special prosecutor, mm -hmm. in 2019, it's been allocated 180 million mm -hmm. Ghana cities. For five years, you are talking about 900 million. And, and what is the purpose of the office of the special prosecutor? It is to fight corruption. And there is nothing that can fight corruption better than having the right to information. Because we are talking about... The special about prosecutor needs the RTI. Yes. Ex exactly. The he special needs you to bring him information. Exactly. And so we are talking about a law that then empowers everyone to be an actor in the anti-corruption fight. Parliament. You see, if you're talking about 750, basic calculation, you are saying that, look, this translates into, if we have a population of 30 million, this translates into, you know, five cities per person per year, five cities per person to uphold the rights of the individual to access information and to be able to contribute towards the fight against corruption. But the reality is that, do we really, you know, those who are supposed to be leading the fight mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, the people that we've entrusted our, our power to, are they really committed to the fight against corruption? Or is just that, you know, they say it. So for me, even if the figure is true. Mm -hmm. For me, it's, 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 it's cheap. OK. Now, uh, Prof, there are those who also say, look, so what exactly do our leadership want? Mm -hmm. Do you want to prevent the corruption by a sunshine law, or you want to go fight it in court? We are prosecuting people for millions of dollars. I'm not talking about cities. So which way do you want to go? But ju just, just, mm -hmm. just one yeah. minute. You see, talking about the value of it, 2015, it took Citizen Ghana Movement to go to court mm. on the bus branding. Right. And that single action of accessing the document mm. saved this country about 1.5 million. Thank you. Not you too long ago, mm. we know about this cancellation of the contract. Mm -hmm. It is as a result of a journalist having basic uh, access to basic documents and putting together mm. the and seven, $74 million dollars is, is more than half of the 750 million that we are talking yeah. about over five years. And disclosures and that in the, is the Auditor value. General's yeah, report yeah, right that led that. Occupy Ghana yeah. exactly. to pursue in court and subsequently to have a law, yeah. disallowances and discharge, yeah. uh, surcharges, over five which has billion. led the Auditor General yeah. to yeah. save the country yeah. how much? Over five okay. billion. Thank you. You see, um, yeah. I think politicians do not take us serious. And as a nation, we are not angry enough. Um, and I'm getting a bit worried and a bit disappointed in this government in not pushing 
for the quick passage and implementation of RTI. Because they're, this, they're almost done. They're well, done. so they should. I'm, I've mm. heard a statement that, well, we'll pass it, but we may delay its implementation. Look, this whole idea of right to information was initiated. The first person who wrote about RTI mm. was their founding chairman, B.J. Darocha, in 1996. Yeah. And since then, we have been evading. When you are in opposition, you say you want it. Mm. When you get in, um, into government, you develop cold feet to it. And it hurts me because, see, Ropal, I'm a member, you and I, we are members of the Ropal Implementation Committee. Mm. And we are going, our, uh, going around nationwide doing consultations. And there are imponderable challenges that are being unearthed. Mm. And then also the cost involved in ensuring that people outside the country will vote. Mm. And yet, this bill was passed into law with alacrity because it was going to give votes to politicians. Mm. We never thought about the, the, the cost to a nation that is incapable of fully funding its own elections. We didn't, we didn't think about it. Mm. And yet we passed it with alacrity. Now, this bill has been with us, RTI has been with us since 1996, mm. and then we can't pass it. And then we are giving excuses and all that. We know democracy and opacity are not bedfellows. Mm. And it is important for us to make the point mm. that we should not be taken for granted as a people. If it will give us go votes, let's pass it with, al with al alacrity. <laughs> but if it will give us information to be able to probe into corrupt activities of politicians, mm. let's, let's, de let, let's delay it. <laughs> That's why I'm saying that Thank the politicians you. in Ghana and in Africa mm. are self-seeking, mm. self-perpetuating, mm. and self-aggrandizing cabals. <laughs> okay. Um, some of your, some of our audiences <laughs> have been making comments and they say that He's been booming, <laughs> <laughs> like Jerry it's, it's so annoying. OK, so, annoying. So, so, so Doc, when I, I told Prof that they are almost done, they are done, it is not as if I am naive and unaware mm -hmm. that we have come to that point before. Mm -hmm. We have been yes. at this place yeah, before, yeah. and it was never passed. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going on? I want to believe that they are still holding on to the strategy of Keep information away from the people. Yeah. Let them ask the wrong questions. So we give them the wrong answers. That is the best way of getting politicians to get away with any corrupt activities. Because if citizens are empowered with information, they ask the relevant questions. Because we don't have the information, we ask the, all the wrong questions, they give us the wrong answers, they get away with it. That is the fear. Other than that, look at what Section 100 is saying. Mm. Just a fiscal impact analysis yeah. on how the implementation, in fact, in the year of implementation mm. of the RTI, mm. would impact on the nation's revenue and expenditure. Mm. A simple analysis, mm. which they normally do, mm -hmm. and get away with it. Why would it be an issue when it comes to RTI? Mm. It seems to me that there's something happening somewhere. But <laughs> the, 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 the signal we are sending is that they must pass the RTI now. now. And okay. implement it now. <laughs> okay, maybe we should we should get announced to get in there because we are all <laughs> suspecting. <laughs> we are all suspecting. Um, all right, so that takes us to the very final issue. Um, we have some twenty minutes, but let's see how we are able to make good use of it. And um, let's begin by listening um, to this this uh, uh, tapes, and then we we'll return to this issue quickly. Bissu. Mr. Charles Bissu is secretary to the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining. We told Bissu our excavators were already on site working and we needed him to work on the documents while we were still mining. He took our documents and called for it to be fast tracked for us. <laughs> Because we had to make sure you fast track with the other. So if I knew, yeah, now I know they're working with All resources, eh? Uh -huh. What's the situation? Uh, it hasn't come up yet. Let me, let me quickly check. Okay. 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 Okay.
Right. Okay. So, um, right after that, um, the, the information minister had given an interview or held a press conference and said something. And um, let's hear just a bit of that. And then, and 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 then we will hear also the accusations coming that the claims that he made ran counter to what the president had pledged before now or before the elections. He will put the issues in perspective shortly. Okay, I'm told that um, we'll get it that sorted and uh, shared with all of you soon. So, Doc, this is, um, and it's, it has to be said that uh, last night, yes. um, Mr. Bisu, Charles Bisu, issued a statement. Mm -hmm. um, is it recusing himself? Yeah, yeah, he's stepping aside. Stepping aside from the committee that's mm -hmm. been set up to deal with this matter but people are saying <laughs> that's not enough mm -hmm. you're just stepping aside from the committee mm -hmm. but you are not as it were getting out of your mm -hmm. your job mm -hmm. as a presidential staffer mm -hmm. what do you say first of all well i mean and in, in the statement i think he suggested that well these uh, allegations are untrue yes he said so. he was going to so i guess mm -hmm. in terms of stepping aside that would be that you step aside so not to interfere with the investigation but you still want to be able to challenge what has been. The most important thing is that an investigation must happen. I know uh, Anas and his team has already petitioned the special prosecutor yes. and provided all of the uh, raw footage uh, to the special prosecutor. So those who are waiting for raw footage, it's not a big deal. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Kwekubak has already said that's not a big deal. If copies have been made to the special prosecutor, I'm sure copies can be made uh, to government as well for them to initiate their own discussion. But something, if anybody had doubt. And, and this is what the special prosecutor has said yes. after receiving the document. He says, I know there's a video trending on Galamse. My office was petitioned yesterday, that's Thursday. Mm. I was preparing to come here. He was addressing a, a meeting. So I couldn't read the hefty document mm -hmm. that they brought. Videos have been shown. Mm -hmm. Be assured that if my office investigates it and there is a crime, it shall be dealt with. That's Martin sure. Amidu. Yes. Yeah. So I'm saying if, if anybody, if, was, if in anybody doubt, was in doubt that corruption is a problem, mm -hmm. that if we don't deal with it in a radical way, it would overwhelm us. This other video shows you, and the aspects of it that really is shocking, is that right from the receptionist to whoever, this is a receptionist who is meeting somebody in the, for, for the first time and sitting in the open and even prepared to give tactical information on where uh, you know, the, 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 the police uh, military team will be going in the open. So it tells you, first of all, that person is not afraid of any accountability. The person it acts with impunity because it runs through the institution. But what it also shows is that all these offices that are created where party-related people, they go there thinking this is reward. This is for our investment in the, for contribution to the party. Okay. And therefore, they are there to extort and extract and enrich themselves. It's not there to serve. So all of this, including the military person who is sitting in the corner, everybody sees this as a, as a way of, of acting. And is that kind of pervasiveness and impunity this is where we have gotten mm. it okay. runs everywhere but let me yeah. let me just uh, raise another matter i've heard people say uh anas is um, you know uh, kenny japan has said the wound to me has said it you see and they make this argument that they have ruined people's lives and i ask them it's because those people whether they are customers or judges they didn't come and show you the list of victims they've created on their way to this kind of corruption 
They don't tell you when they are polluting the water and people drank it and died. We can't come and show you the bodies. So for them, they, they haven't... The moral question is asked, if you entice the receptionist, who may not be earning enough at the end of the month, and you entice them with so much, more than or twice their, their monthly pay, what do you expect? Do you, do you know the number of people that get enticed in this country? Because, as I said, it's very pervasive. Okay. Who, who refuse those advances? But they don't just go and say it's okay. These are people who are even giving you other uh, incentives so that you give them more money. Mm. So it, it moves from being passive <laughs> to be active, knowing that right, you're so giving Shule, them more Shule, money. What, so what are your the, expectations the and, and the, the things as they, be, they have begun? Are you satisfied with what has happened so far? Well, um, I, I should, because of where I said, mm. I, I think I must say that my views in terms of um, some of these things being put forward, in, you know, journalistically, I've already expressed yeah. my views about that. Um, but quite clearly, I've also said, if private investigators would do these kinds of things to let us know, people who are put in certain positions to defend us, you know, uh, in different ways, how they would potentially act if if they come uh, if 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 offers are made, and in this case we've we've witnessed how people uh, who were taxed to ensure that the president's fight against Galamse yeah. and all of that um, to exactly hmm. comes to an end. Arada how they promoting. conducted a rather promoting that enter that same enterprise that we are seeking to end. Um, so far, well, we've had occasions where the president has been quite swift in terms of referring matters to the police or calling on the CID to investigate people and so on and so forth. And given the passion with which the president himself did speak on several occasions about his commitment to the fight against Galamse, I was expecting that perhaps between the time that we saw the releases and now, um, some personal statements would have been made or at least, at least some statements would have been made through some of his appointees um, to demonstrate that, look, indeed, this is a matter that is dear to my heart. Whether or not the contents of the tape, you know, are true is, is another matter, and mm. that is subject to investigations. Okay. But to demonstrate, you know, the commitment and the passion, the passion that he had, I believe that some intervention has to be made from that highest level so that at least that confidence that okay. people as have we, as, we, as we said earlier, uh, Charles Bissou, he's not the only one in this tape, uh, a whole host of other people, but he has stepped aside as the man who is running this office, and he says he's not guilty, he's not done anything wrong, so due process must take its course. But earlier, there had been issues about a reaction from the, from the government through Kojo Opon Kruma, the information minister, and he has a certain clarity on it. But then let's listen to Kojo Opon Kruma, and then listen to the president, whether or not he's acting as fast as he had promised when he was seeking uh, office. Government will have the set tapes properly investigated using the raw and edited footage. The investigative um, agencies in this country, typically the police, if it's with economic uh, crime matters, EUCO, etc., the appropriate uh, um, uh, security agency or the appropriate agency of state that is responsible for conducting this investigation, I'm sure, um, will soon be given the green light to commence looking into it. But the important thing is for everybody to understand that the state takes this matter very seriously because it is a fight that the administration is very committed to, the media has been committed to, the people of Ghana uh, are committed um, to this fight as well. And we welcome any support that will help us win this fight. If there's evidence out there that that fight is being undermined in any way, we consider it as helpful to the system, we would look into it, examine it, for what it is and be able to take the necessary actions consequently. Uh, and if that investigation established that somebody has gone contrary to the law, which is why I gave you a few examples, whether somebody was soliciting monies or somebody was uh, taking bribes to bend the rules or some other form of illegality uh, as part of this national fight, the president has always shown his commitment to um, deal with matters and uh, he will deal with that. Yeah, thank you very much. You have specifically mentioned corruption within the taxation system. What exactly will you do to stem this out? The, the measures are going to be difficult, but there have to be a variety of them, a variety of them. 
uh, including what I consider, what I, con I, I, I call the ANAS principle, um, setting up highly motivated professional groups of young people who will work, if you like, as it were, undercover to unearth examples of corruption wherever they can find it, and thereby allow the authority to deal with the issue. Because not only do you unearth the corruption, but you actually deal with it in terms of sending people to court, prosecuting them, hopefully the courts will cooperate and make sure that the offenders are, are, are found guilty and sanctions appropriately enforced. So a variety of measures, but a key one is the NS principle, as well as, of course, what you do to do to securize those who are in the, in the tax collecting. <laughs> Right, so you had uh, Kojo Pongkroma and you had uh, the president in 2012 when he was seeking uh, office. Now, uh, Kojo has sought a clarification that the media reportage is not exactly accurate and that it is important to note that government has welcomed and welcomes any effort aimed at assisting the state to win the fight against corruption, particularly in this Gal Galamse uh, thing. Government has not requested for the raw tapes of the ANAS video. Government has also not said it will by itself investigate the matter. I'm sure you heard him. And he says that his words were that government will have the tapes investigated. All right. So, Doc, uh, Prof, quickly, uh, what do you think? Are people in a hurry to uh, push the president to act on this because he has promised before that he was going to use ANAS principle? Well, I, I think people legitimately have the right to say what they are saying, and things, some of these things captured on tape are quite clear, and so investigating them again, I don't know the extent to which they want to go. But you see, this is a precedent who when was prepared. They, when some judges were implicated, mm. they went through a process, process, and the process found them guilty mm. before the president, Nana Kufuadu signed the, re the dismissal letters. Okay. Why should he not do the so same So what this? you mean by that is that with even the vivid pictures um, that have been captured in the video and all that, we will have to go through another set or system of investigation just to establish culpability or something. Yes. Well, if that is the case, you let me go and make, up, make my point. But it seems to me that um, the, the extent to which corruption has been pervasive requires some form of drastic and radical interventions of the state. And I'm saying that this is a president who was prepared to put his presidency on the line in fighting Galamsey. It was a difficult thing he said that he's prepared to put his pres presidency on the line. And one of the, he should go down in history as somebody who um, demonstrated the zeal and political will in dealing with this particular what problem. What should happen? What, so what, what do you expect is, that you haven't seen? Yeah, my, my since point the video now, was released my point on now, Wednesday. My point now is that there should be swift and drastic action. It's not about just um, somebody stepping aside, but we should act drastically to ensure that um, people who are doing things that run contrary to what the president stands for, particularly with respect to the fight against, you know, um, Galamsi are just brought to book. Otherwise, then there wouldn't be leadership. Mm. Leadership, we're talking about ability to inspire confidence and influence people who said that those you are working with are willing to give you enthusiastic cooperation to help you succeed in whatever vision you may have, you know, set before you. And so if there are people who are doing things and they are right within, you know, so close to you, and they are doing things that are running contrary to what you stand for, then but I think the whip must be okay. cracked. Dr. Drusa, what, what, do we, what do we expect? that the president should do what? Um, pinpoint the people in the, f in the footage who were seen taking monies <laughs> from the front desk guy to the soldier, to the police officer, to the guy who has also been identified allegedly as a wound to miss uh, man, and to Charles Bissu, and then do what? Parade them before the cameras and say, all of you, you have been sacked, or what? What do we expect? No, in we any case, Charles Bissu, whom he appointed, and he is secretary to the committee, step has stepped aside. You yeah, say merely, that's not good no, enough? I, <laughs> so I think we are in a country of rule of law, and there's the need to gather adequate, relevant, and reliable evidence to establish culpability. So yes, I think the, what the president would have to do is to ask all of them to step aside. 
You should not take Charles B. C. U. to say that, well, I, I am stepping aside. No. The president should have said that, look, because you have been shown in the yeah. uh, video, step aside from the activities of the uh, interministerial, yeah. uh, whatever it is. Then I also invite... The process invite is you suck, not... No, you can't, you can't suck yeah. if no, you no, have no, not established culpability. You need to go through the motions to establish culpability. But to start with, allow them to step aside. Well, and then Anas must show the unedited version to Ghanaians. Seriously. Unedited. Unedited, yes. He should show the unedited there version to Ghanaians. Hundreds of hours. No. He should show the unedited version to Ghanaians so that if anything at all, a quarter or a certain group wants to do some cover up, Ghanaians would expose them. It's very He's, important. He submitted them to the special prosecutor. That is not enough. Let us, o, let us operate a transparent system by showing the entire unedited version to Ghanaians. So even if so, so those who want to watch you Previously, watch. he didn't do that. You didn't demand that. Why are you demanding that? We are that demanding now? that now. The fact that he did not do that in the previous ones does not prevent us from demanding it. And I'm demanding this now because we want better and proper action to be taken now. Okay. And the president, and the, through the Minister of Information, has uh, asked that that must be submitted to the presidency. No, Why the, not Ghanaians? The Minister of Information says that yes. they have not requested for the raw tapes. It was misreporting by the media. Okay, if they have not requested, Ghanaians are requesting for it. They okay. should show it, the unedited uh, version, mm. so we can draw our own conclusions. I see. So that any actions that will be taken by the SP himself well, he says or this the is, president. This is part one, and part two is supposed to come. And I have some knowledge long ago that there was uh, investigations going on by Anas in the Galamse area, okay. even before 2016. Mm. So. Um, I was expecting to see a bigger package that does, that's not limited only to the uh, committee set yes. up by the president to fight yes. Galamsey now. So let's see what uh, part two will present. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you all for watching and listening. My guests have been Dr. Kojo Pumpuni Asante. He is the director um, for advocacy and policy engagement at CDD Ghana. He's a lawyer. Suleimana. Brahima uh, is the executive director of Media Foundation for West Africa. Professor Ransford Jampo is associate professor of political science, University of Ghana. And Dr. Eric Odro Sai is lawyer and governance expert. I'm Samson Ladia Yanini. My outfit, as always, is by Latida. Have a good afternoon.